This evening, Ghana earns Tier 1 ranking in U.S. report on human trafficking. Barbie's Woman awarded $2.2 million against Ghana Police Force for unlawful detention in Henry Boy's case. Man arrested for allegedly attempting to take 13-year-old stepdaughter for illegal abortion. In the region, Iran's Raisi signs several cooperation deals in Cuba. And internationally, China's economy anemic as industrial output and retail sales growth slows. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Update for June 16, 2023. I am Vivi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. In the latest report, Joshua Paris, also known as Stewie, the accused suspect in the killing of a Ghana Defense Force officer during a carjacking, had reportedly informed the police that he was compelled to abandon the stolen vehicle when the buyers refused to accept it. According to Paris, the buyers who had hired him changed their minds upon learning that the soldier had been fatally shot. Police apprehended Paris in Sophia on Tuesday after identifying him as one of the individuals involved in the murder of Lieutenant Royden Anthony Douglas and the theft of his car. Last Wednesday, Lieutenant Douglas was fatally shot while trying to defend his vehicle from two carjackers on Cul-de-Sac Street, North Rhymeville, Georgetown. Paris stated that he was hired to steal a car for $700,000 and met up with his accomplices Fox and Brandy to carry out the crime. They targeted a taxi driver but ended up carjacking Lt. Douglas instead. After the murder, they attempted to sell the stolen car but were rejected by potential buyers who discovered it was involved in a killing. They subsequently abandoned it on Stone Avenue, Campbellville. While the police continued their search for other suspects, Paris was arraigned at the Georgetown Magistrates Court on Thursday, charged with murder and has been remanded to prison. A woman from Barbies has been awarded $2.2 million in damages by Chief Justice Acting Roxanne George against the Ghana Police Force for her unlawful detention and arrest in connection with the death of the Henry Boys in November of 2020. Rihanna Reginald, represented by her attorney Dexter Todd and Dexter Smart, argued that she was unlawfully arrested by the CID and held in custody without being charged from November 7 to November 11, 2020. During her detention, she claimed to have experienced cruel treatment, including being denied communication with her family and lawyers. Reginald sought compensation for violation of her fundamental rights and the Chief Justice ruled in her favor. Reginald's lawyers emphasized that no citizen can be arrested without lawful reasons and that the judiciary must protect constitutional rights. The court heard about the conditions of her detention, including being confined to a cell with unsanitary conditions. The Chief Justice awarded $1.6 million for breaches of Reginald's fundamental rights, $50,000 for discrimination, and $350,000 in vindictory damages. The court also imposed costs of $250,000 on the police force. A man from the Northwest District was apprehended by the police in Charity Pomeroo River as he allegedly attempted to take his 13-year-old stepdaughter to an illegal clinic for an abortion. The man, who shares a relationship with the child's mother, had allegedly been involved in molesting the victim for many years. After the family relocated to a new area, the abuse continued, with the child's mother allegedly being aware of the situation but choosing to remain silent due to the man being the family's primary provider and claiming to have a medical condition. Last week, the child's school teacher discovered her pregnancy when she fell ill. Upon learning of the allegations, the man devised a plan to have her undergo an abortion. And on Wednesday morning, the police in charity received the tip-off of the man and the victim, accompanied by her older brother, were en route to an area in a passenger boat from Maruka. The man was promptly arrested and questioned upon their arrival. He is presently in custody and expected to face court proceedings shortly. Residents of Maruka have since expressed concerns over a disturbing pattern of incidents involving underage girls being impregnated by adult males in the area. The reoccurring nature of these incidents underscores the importance of raising awareness, providing support, and implementing preventative measures to ensure the safety and well-being of the young girls in the community. 
Stick around when we return. Ghana prison inmates reap abundant harvest in agricultural rehabilitation program. And Ghana earns tier one ranking in U.S. reports on human trafficking. When you need money and you gotta get it fast. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. It's a fantastic Father's Day sale happening at Clarence on Friday, June 16th. Get men's long sleeve shirts in brands like Michael Kors, Calvin Klein, and Kenneth Cole. Up to 50% off, 15% off jerseys and jeans. Men's sneakers and shoes up to 50% off. 10% off original Levi's and Doctor's Pants, along with other great gift ideas like belts, slippers, perfumes, ties, and lots more. We also have available gift vouchers. Remember, this sale is Friday, June 16th at Clarence. Clarence, always keeping you in style. Smart Minds Educational Institute, offering preschool, nursery, and primary levels. Finally, a school that is every parent's dream. Located at 69 Crow Street, offering academic excellence, trained, qualified teachers, small class sizes, personalized gear, and one-to-one -one attention for your little ones. At Smart Minds, register for full-time or evening classes, daily practice pass exam papers for proficiency at the grade 2, 4, and 6 assessment, and CXE exam preparedness. Or join our Becca Phonics reading and writing program. So if your child is for preschool, nursery, or primary level, come to Smart Mind, located at 69 Earl Street, or call 231-4885 or 600 to enroll now. Hello, my fellow TikTok followers. He is credit. And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fetters, and poise cake. For the noodles, all we need will be using peppies, black pepper, kasri, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, fried spice, and our purpose seasoning. Next, this chicken that we marinate it, soak for all you want to know nothing with peppies, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and document clarity flour, and then this butter we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in oil. We serve with peppies, barbecue sauce. Radical went to the supermarket, and she proper buy up enough, enough things. She feels she alone can cook, but she wrote the name wrong. It's shaped like a guy in a mop. Peppies <laughs> has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies, we put the pep back into your kitchen. H&T's Theatre Arts Group presents Dedication to Daddy 4, an evening of song, dance, and drama under the theme of Father's Dream on Sunday, June 18 from 8 p.m. at the National Cultural Center. Come enjoy performances by Colin Ambrose, Marissa Morgan Boney, Romel Edmondson, Keisha Sam, Sonia Yard, Simone Dowding, Julian Harry, Ezzie Crandon, Cleveland Hudson, Mosa Telford, Creative Arts Dance Troupe, and others. Tickets are $2,000 Directed by Sharon Cadogan Taylor. It's Dedication to Daddy 4, honoring Exceptional fathers on Father's Day. Good, good girl, forget things. Oh, Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Welcome back. The Minister of Home Affairs, along with the Ministerial Task Force on Trafficking in Persons, is pleased to announce that the United States Department of State has once again ranked Ghana as a Tier 1 country in its effort to combat human trafficking. 
This recognition reflects the hard work and dedication of the task force members, NGOs, and other stakeholders who have contributed through increased reporting, training, awareness campaigns, proactive investigations, victim protection, and partnerships. Ghana's Tier 1 placement for the seventh consecutive year demonstrates the country's sustained efforts in combating human trafficking, even amidst challenges such as the global health pandemic, increased use of online platforms by traffickers, rising incidents of migrant smuggling, and evolving recruitment tactics. The 2023 U.S. State Department report focuses on partnerships and sheds light on the global issue of human trafficking. The report recognizes Ghana's achievements while providing recommendations to further enhance Ghana's effort in combating this crime and supporting trafficking victims. In the first half of 2023, the Ghana Police Force Trafficking in Persons Unit investigated 21 reported cases, interviewed and screened 244 alleged victims, including 23 minors, and charged five individuals with offenses related to trafficking, assault, forgery, and operating a brothel. Further charges of trafficking in persons are forthcoming. The general public is encouraged to report suspected instances of trafficking in persons by utilizing the 24 hours English or Spanish tip hotlines on the screen. Or you can visit the nearest police station. In other news, the Agricultural Rehabilitation Program offered by the Ghana Prison Service continues to yield fruitful results as the Mazaruni prison inmates recently celebrated a significant harvest of vegetables and fruits. Several pineapples and over 400 pounds of cabbage and balanje were collected over the week, demonstrating the program's success. Additionally, the farm produced an impressive 235 pounds of chicken. Nicolon Elliott, the director of prisons, highlighted that the Ghana Prison Service greatly emphasizes creating a self-sufficient food supply. The agricultural activities conducted by the inmates aligns with the technical and vocational programs established by the GPS, which aims to unlock the full potential of individuals while boosting agricultural production across all five prison farms. Elliot Forder emphasized that recent efforts have been concentrated on ensuring that the farms are fully utilized to meet the future needs of the prison population. The goal is to achieve a self-sufficient system where prison farms can adequately supply the dietary requirements of individuals in the coming years. The prison's commitment to agricultural initiatives provide a valuable opportunity for inmates to develop skills and contribute to the broader goal of enhancing food security within the correctional system. As the Prison Service Agricultural Program continues to thrive, it plays a crucial role in rehabilitation and reintegration, equipping individuals with practical knowledge and cultivating a sense of responsibility and purpose. Don't go away after the break. Kenya called survivors to undergo mental health assessments and China's economy anemic as industrial output and retail sales growth slows. Problem, Granny. I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Hello, my fellow TikTok followers. He is credit. And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fetters, and poise cake. For the noodles, all we need will be using peppies, black pepper, kasri, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, white spice, and our purpose. Season. Next, this chicken that we marinate it, soak for all you know, know nothing with peppers, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and document platinum flour, and then this butter we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in oil. We serve with peppers, barbecue sauce. Radical went to the supermarket and she pop up buy up enough, enough things. She feels she alone can cook, but she wrote it even wrong. It's shaped like a guy in a mop. Peppers <laughs> has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies, we put the pep back into your kitchen. 
H&T Theater Arts Group presents Dedication to Daddy 4, an evening of song, dance, and drama under the theme of Father's Dream on Sunday, June 18 from 8 p.m. at the National Cultural Center. Come enjoy performances by Colin Ambrose, Marissa Morgan Boney, Romel Edmondson, Keisha Sam, Sonia Yard, Simone Dowding, Jolyon Harry, Ezzie Crandon, Cleveland Hudson, Mosa Telford, Creative Arts Dance Troupe, and others. Tickets are $2,500. Directed by Sharon Cadogan-Taylor. It's Dedication to Daddy 4. Honoring exceptional fathers on Father's Day. Smart Minds Educational Institute offering preschool, nursery, and primary levels. Finally, a school that is every parent's dream. Located at 69 Crow Street. Offering academic excellence. Trained, qualified teachers. Small class sizes. Personalized gear. And one-to-one attention for your little ones. At Smart Minds, register for full-time or evening classes. Daily practice pass exam papers for proficiency at the grade 2, 4, and 6 assessment. And CXE exam preparedness. Or join our Becca Phonics reading and writing program. So if your child is for preschool, nursery or primary level, come to Smart Mind located at 69 Old Street or call 231-4885 or 600-9229 to enroll now. It's a fantastic Father's Day sale happening at Clarence on Friday, June 16th. Get men's long sleeve shirts in brands like Michael Kors, Calvin Klein, and Kenneth Cole. Up to 50% off, 15% off jerseys and jeans. Men's sneakers and shoes up to 50% off, 10% off original Levi's and Dockers pants. Along with other great gift ideas like belts, slippers, perfumes, ties, and lots more. We also have available gift vouchers. Remember, this sale is Friday, June 16th at Clarence. Clarence, always keeping you in style. When you need money and you've got to get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Welcome back. Now let's take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. Iran's President Ibrahim Raisi has wrapped up a Latin America visit with a final stop in Cuba. He has signed several cooperation deals as he seeks to shore up support with allies who are also under the United States sanctions, Al Jazeera's Lucia Newman reports. They're from different corners of the globe, but there's a common adversary that draws them together. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi arrived in Havana, Cuba on Thursday after wrapping up visits to Venezuela and Nicaragua. All four countries share a strong hostility towards the United States, which has long-running sanctions against them. Former U.S. President George Bush, in fact, once labeled Iran and Cuba as members of the, quote, axis of evil. Raisi and his Cuban counterpart, Miguel Diaz-Canel, held private talks before their ministers signed a number of cooperation agreements. Cuba assisted Iran during the pandemic by supplying vaccines. Now Cuba is suffering from an acute shortage of fuel, which Iran may help ease. We are grateful for your successful tour of Latin America, including Cuba. Raisi's first Latin American visit since taking office nearly two years ago aimed to underscore the need for countries that do not fall under the U.S. sphere of influence or friendship to stick together. They say it will lead to further integration and the building of a multipolar world. The Iranian leader attended a business forum and promised to work with Cuba in hydroelectric power generation and mining. <laughs> I have on my agenda the commitment I made to the president. I wanted to greet you and confirm that the Islamic Republic of Iran is determined to work with friendly countries such as Cuba in science and technology and for the importance it has in our foreign policy. 
The U.S. State Department has been watching the visit closely, calling it, quote, destabilizing behavior. But while Iran may be very far away from Latin America, its choice of regional allies shows that sharing a powerful common adversary is a strong incentive for sticking together. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera. Internationally, a court in Kenya has ordered survivors of a doomsday cult to undergo psychological assessments. A senior prosecutor says 16 of 65 freed cult members have starved themselves for nearly two weeks. Dozens of people were rescued from the Shakahola forest, where more than 300 bodies were found. Al Jazeera's Katerina Soy has more. Survivors of a religious cult on the Kenyan coast find themselves in unfamiliar territory. They are arraigned at a magistrate's court in Mombasa County and put in police custody for refusing to eat. They were rescued from the Shakahola Ranch in Malindi. That's where their preacher, Paul Mackenzie, encouraged worshippers to starve to death so they could meet Jesus. The prosecutor wanted to charge them with attempted suicide. The magistrate ruled 64 of the victims should be taken back to a rescue center where they will be supervised by the court, police, and human rights lawyers. One survivor opted to stay in a police cell without giving a reason. Her case will be reviewed in two weeks. Each of the 64 shall undergo mental assessment and individual reports to be filed, and the medical officer in charge, Coast Region, shall ensure compliance. Human rights activists and lawyers who are in court say the ruling was fair. That an individualized assessment be done in respect of each of the victims and that such assessment be done by a qualified mental health practitioner. Mackenzie and other suspects appeared before court on Wednesday. They have also been on a hunger strike. They looked weak and emaciated. Some had to be helped as they walked into the courtroom. The death toll stands at about 318 and counting. Uh, DNA testing still going on. The police are still holding them as they continue investigations. Catherine Soy, Al Jazeera, Nairobi. And finally, China's economy showed further signs of weakness in May. Industrial output and retail sales both missed forecasts. Beijing is expected to increase its effort to boost the economy to shore up its post-COVID-19 recovery. Al Jazeera's Katrina Yu has more. China's economic recovery is losing momentum. That's according to official data for May. Retail sales rose by 12.7 percent, sowing from 18.4 percent in the previous month. Industrial production expanded 3.5 percent, down from a 5.6 percent rise in April. Both missed estimates. Weaker global demand for exports is also weighing on the economy. The international environment is complex and severe. World economic growth is sluggish. The domestic economy is recovering, but market demand is still insufficient, and some structural problems are more prominent. Conditions have worsened for young people. Youth unemployment has risen to a record high of 20.8 percent. This year, more than 11.5 million graduates are expected to enter the job market. There are so many students graduating this year, but there aren't enough jobs. We're fighting for these jobs. It paints a gloomy picture. Many expected a bigger rebound after strict coronavirus controls ended. China's heavy-handed pandemic restrictions have been over for months. People are now free to shop, eat out and travel. But consumer confidence here remains stubbornly weak. Many people are simply not comfortable spending a large amount of their savings. That sentiment is reflected in the housing sector. Property investment contracted 7.2% in the first five months compared to the same period in 2022. Construction of new homes plunged. The central bank has reduced the rate on its one-year loans for the first time in 10 months. And there are calls for Beijing to do more. But analysts say the government will avoid large-scale measures for fear of overstimulating the economy. 
So Beijing essentially tried to deflate the bubble on its own terms. Um, it has no intention of going back to reinflating that bubble. And, uh, and, and, and the larger story, of course, here is that there is a concerted effort to change the Chinese growth model. That old model that relied on very high levels of investment, which of course meant high levels of debt. Authorities are downplaying concerns and say the economy will pick up momentum later this year. They insist China is still on track to hit a GDP target of around 5% for 2023. Katrina Yu, Al Jazeera, Beijing. This is brought us to the end of our regional and global news coverage. Up next is the three day weather forecast. That's CFTV2 headline news for this Friday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. You can also tune in tomorrow morning at 6.30 for a rebroadcast and Monday evening at 7 for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other and do have a wonderful day.